Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Roundtable. I'm Cara Riley and I'm so excited to be here today with a, a team of real estate professionals as we start our new series, Connecting the Dots Around the World in Real Estate. And we're starting in Chicago, Illinois with the, this a wonderful team who will be sharing how to purchase residential real estate from the beginning all the way to closing to try and help you have some balance in the tr biggest transaction of most people's lives. And it should be a very fun and exciting adventure. So let's get right to meeting our team players. Um, we have our fantastic real estate professional, Anne McMillan, from um, uh, Starting Point Realty, and she is specializes in first-time home buyers working in the big city of Chicago and western suburbs. Anne is going to be sharing the entire process here, starting from buyer agency, selecting a lender, making an offer, and how the inspection fits into the transaction all the way to closing. So Anne, how are you today in Chicago? Is it cold? It's zero degrees, so yes, I think that qualifies. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm here in uh, Williams, Arizona, and we're, we're about 19, so we're a heat wave for us. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Anne, if I were coming to Chicago, how do I start? If I, uh, what would I do if I wanted to buy real estate in Chicago? Okay, thanks, Cara. The first step, and the most important when you want to buy a house in Chicago, or I can imagine anywhere, is to get pre-approved with a qualified mortgage lender. So that's why we have Jean today, and Jean is going to talk more about the financial aspect, but even from my standpoint as a real estate broker, the most important step is to talk to a lender and learn what it is that you can afford. Um, you want to find somebody who answers your questions, who helps you find out about different types of mortgages, will help you fix your credit if anything needs to be changed. Someone who's going to be there with you from start to finish through the whole deal and who you really work well with. So Anne, the, the bottom line is don't go to the store if you don't know how much you can spend, right? <laughs> Exactly. You don't want to start looking for homes before you found out how much you can afford because you may be looking way above your price range or sometimes you might be looking way below your price range. You're not liking anything you're seeing and you're getting really frustrated and it turns out you've been completely wasting your time. So you always want to know your price range before you actually start looking. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, sure. now what? Now what? So you've got the pre-qualification or the pre-approval and you're ready to start looking. You want to make your list of must-haves and things that you want. I want to caution against having too many things on the must-have list because in my experience, especially working with first-time home buyers, almost nobody can afford every single thing on their list. You're going to have to compromise and prioritize. So you take your list of what's most important to you and your must-haves are things that if a home had everything else on your list except for this one thing, you still could not buy it. For most people, that's not going to be more than maybe three, four things like bedroom count, parking space, location, pets allowed. You want to try to avoid having too, too many things on this list though because it's just going to make your search impossible for you and for your agent. I mean, you're going to be looking for something that's maybe way out of your price range. So you want to set up your list and it's okay to make changes as you go. That happens to a lot of buyers. You think you know one thing and it turns out that actually you're looking for something else and you found something that had two bedrooms and you thought you were dead set on three. That's okay to change your list as you go. You just want to be wary of having too many things that you're dead set on having. Well, that's a good idea. Just just make your list, check it twice, but it's okay to change. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You don't want to yeah, be too afraid great. to go outside the box. That's fine. So you keep looking. You have your list. You maybe make some changes. Hopefully, you find a property that you like and you want to make an offer on it. So the way that the offer process works is your buyer's agent, who hopefully you found someone who you enjoy working with, who is your exclusive representation, 
I should backtrack a little. In the state of Illinois, we have buyer's agents and we have seller's agents. <coughs> I want to make a really strong case that you should have someone who's there to represent you as a buyer in the transaction. The listing agent, by definition, is there to work for the seller and to represent their best interests. You want someone who's there to help you represent your best interests, help you negotiate your offer, help you write your offer, keep track of the transaction as it's progressing, communicate with your lender, make sure that everything is going as it should. So you really want to have someone who's there to represent you on the other hand, don't make that decision too prematurely. You don't have to commit to the first real estate agent you meet. Maybe the two of you aren't a good fit. It doesn't work well. You don't work well with them. They don't work well with you. They're not covering the areas you're looking in. It's okay to meet a few people, and you should, before you really settle on one and agree that this one person is going to represent you. So once you've I got think that's that great. Person. So really what you're saying, Anne, I think, and it's really a good idea, is like you're really trying each other out to see. Mm -hmm. And so maybe for the first time you go out on a one-day only buyer agency, which um, it, it says, okay, I'm, I'm working for you for this one day, but we have to agree to uh, extend it. And that way if they don't care for you, they can just nicely move on and if something is not fitting for you, you also have the option of saying, do I want to work with you? I think that's really a great way to work, Anne. Yes, exactly, and it's, it's nice to not have anyone feel tied down to anybody else. So you've got your agent, you've looked for properties, you find one you like, you're ready to make an offer and negotiate that offer with the seller. So in the state of Illinois, we have a lot of things that are negotiable, the first obviously being price, so what you're going to do, and Jean can talk a little bit more about this, we're not going to go too much into appraisals, but when you find a place, you're going to look at in the city what sold within that building in the last six months, in the suburbs, what sold within a mile radius in the same town and the same school district over the last six months. And based on what's sold, you're going to come up with what you think is the market value, the fair price for you to pay for that house, as well as the fair price for the seller to receive, and what you think the home will appraise for. So Jean can talk a little bit more about that, but the appraisal is a very important part of the loan process. And so you want to be diligent with your comps so that you're making sure that you're not going to pay $300,000 for a home that's going to end up appraising for two sixty. dollars so the exciting thing about working with you, Anne, as a buyer's um, agent is the fact that you will help the, the um, buyer know the market comps and that the offer that you make will be around the fact the house has to appraise. Yes, so you're going to have your buyer's agent, another good reason to have a buyer's agent, they're going to look up everything that's sold in the last six months in that building and nearby buildings and as well as take into consideration how much is on the market. If you're the only two bedroom in that building, it's a lot different than if there are 10 two bedrooms for sale in that building. They're going to look at how many foreclosures have been in that building, how many short sales there are, and what the average time on the market is and the average percent of sales price received within that area. So there's a lot of data, a lot of market forces to take into consideration when you're making your offer, more than just a dead set number of 90% of list price is average, so we're just going to go with that all the time and expect that that's it. There's so many factors to take into consideration. Well, and this is why people need a team in um, purchasing a home, so that they, they feel like everyone's on the same team trying to pull the deal together. Thanks, Anne. Exactly. So you've got the home. Hopefully you came up with a good price based on the comps, and you've been able to agree to terms with the seller. Now you're under contract. This is where your team really comes into it. At the point where you go under contract in Chicagoland, that's when you have a real estate attorney who gets involved. One note is that you always want to have a real estate attorney, not your brother-in-law who happens to practice divorce law who just comes in and takes over the transaction. You definitely want someone who's familiar with these type of deals. So that's when your lender comes back into the loop, the attorney joins, and your inspection. So home inspections in the state of Illinois, or I should say in Chicagoland because that's really what I'm familiar with, 
you always have the right to have an inspection even if the home is conveyed as is. So you have five business days from the date that you go under contract to have a professional home inspector come out and look at the home. He's going to do a very thorough check of all the appliances, the roof, the fireplace, the balcony, the floors, the walls, the windows, the doors, every aspect your inspector is going to look at it. You want to absolutely be there. The inspector is going to give you a thorough report of everything that he saw, good and bad. But at the same time, it's very important that you actually attend the inspection as well as your agent does because they have a little bit more familiarity with these things and they can help you know what's dangerous and what might sound like a huge problem, but actually it's not such a big deal and you can maybe live in the home for six months before you take care of this thing. So, Anne, um, do you have lists when you work with a buyer then of uh, inspectors that specialize in a specific area, you know, that can that can do the inspections? Yeah, absolutely. So your agent is a great resource for home inspectors. Most have a list of people who they've worked with before who have done a great job, who are very thorough, um, as well as something that possibly your attorney can help you with or even your lender. So you can get recommendations for inspectors across the board, but your real estate agent is a great resource for that. Well, and I think sometimes in the past, you know, uh, people tend to use an inspection as a renegotiation of a contract. And uh, how do you feel about that? That really, that is not is is that what an inspection is for, or is the inspection if the need smoke alarm in the batter or the batteries in the smoke alarm that is not something to put on the inspection? Would you agree? <laughs> well, two things. So, right, you don't want to put every teeny little thing. You don't want to send them a list of 50 items to repair. You don't want to include everything. You really want to stick to the major components of the home that are not functioning or perhaps you want to consider if you're going to have to put some serious money into repairing that thing right away. So you don't want to get nitpicky like you said. I think that's great, yeah. The inspection really is another negotiation because if you're paying $200,000 for a home that you thought you were going to have to put maybe $5,000 in to decorate it and get a new stove. You go to the inspection, turns out you need a new roof, you need a new air conditioner, you need a new hot water heater, you've got three windows that aren't opening properly. That now becomes several thousand dollars that you need to put into that home. So it really is another negotiation with the seller as to what credits you're going to receive or what things are going to fix. And in Chicagoland, you can ask for two different things, a credit for something or for them to fix it themselves. That's excellent. So that is, again, a reason why people need the team, everybody working on the same team, to realize these issues are going to come up. <laughs> Every yes. single deal, these will yep. come up. <laughs> Absolutely. No home is perfect, even if it's brand new. There's usually something that's not perfect about the home. Excellent. So, I'm going to try to wrap up so we can get to Richard here um, because insurance is a very important aspect of buying the home and you do need homeowner's insurance in order to be able to close on your home and get your financing with a lender like Jean. So you've worked out your inspection issues. At that point, you're having your appraisal done like Jean will talk about and you're really working with your lender to get to the closing table to provide all your documents and get to that point where you are clear to close and ready to go. At closing um, in Illinois, it typically takes place about 30 to 60 days from the date when you went under contract. That date can obviously vary. You can go a little bit less. You can go more if you need to. But 30 to 60 days is the average. So 30 to 60 days from the date that you went under contract, you will close on your home. In Chicagoland, we close at a title company. And you do take possession the date of closing. So you're sitting down. Your attorney's there. Sometimes the lender is there, sometimes they're back at the office communicating with you by phone or email and the title company and your agent's there and you're going to leave with the keys. You can have your moving van booked for later that afternoon if you want to. So it's a great system where you're actually getting the keys right there and then when you get your mortgage finalized and your attorney's there to help you sign off on everything. I think that's an important thing for people to realize because around the world and around the country there are different um, uh, actions with that possession and so we know mm -hmm. that in the Chicago area the possession is day of closing. Thanks for clearing that up, Anne. Yeah, so in some areas I know they mail the keys to you but no, you're going to get them <laughs> handed to you across the table after everything's signed and 
finished up. So that's great. That's, that's really it. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. We're going to close and you're going to take possession. We okay? Well, I think we'll go to the lender next because we can't even hop in the car with you until we uh, we get to the loan. And, uh, and Gene, you can unmute yourself now. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. How are you? Oh, that's oh, great. That's great. That's great. We're uh, uh, experiencing a little bit of, of feedback, and we had some gremlins. Thanks for uh, hanging in there, everyone. And it is my pleasure to introduce Gene Mark as the regional manager for the mortgage uh, lending at American Mortgage Corporation. And this is very cool to know that the man that you are going to meet today and you're looking at right now can loan all of Illinois and 16 other states. So if you look in the details of the event and also the description of the YouTube that will be finished when we're done here. You can see all the other states, and I was delighted to find out that Gene, you can loan in Arizona. Right. Nice and nice places. Might have to come out and actually write that loan there. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, one of the fun things about um, Google Plus and uh, networking in cyberspace, I met Gene Munt probably three years ago in a real estate blogging platform called Active Rain. And I have just been so impressed with his knowledge and his professionalism um, with how he reaches out to share mortgage information, current changes. He's been in the business for 36 years and in almost every aspect um, from appraising to originating with federal banks, mortgage companies. So Gene Munch, I have to tell you, uh, is an amazing lender and listen to what he says about starting to get a home loan to purchase that American dream. So Gene, this show's for you now. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you, Cara. And I want to thank Ann McMillan also for her excellent presentation uh, for the home buying process. I highly encourage any uh, home buyers that are looking to buy in uh, the Illinois area, primarily the Chicago area and the western suburbs, to please find Ann. Uh, she'll do a wonderful job for you. And as thank to you, Cara, you. I appreciate uh, all that you've done in the mentoring side of social media and uh, getting me into the uh, 21st century, if you will. <laughs> and uh, we're learning every day. And uh, when we quit learning, we're, we're really not doing our job. So. But isn't it fun to learn together? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, so, some of us need more help than others. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I always like uh, I like more help, and I like uh, I like to uh, expand my uh, my my resources at all times. So, bottom line is, uh, I'm going to introduce myself formally: Gene Munt, American Portfolio Mortgage, uh, NMLS number two one six nine eight seven. Uh, that number means that I am a licensed loan originator as uh, registered with the National Mortgage Licensing Service and that again uh, allows me to stay on top of all the changes in the industry uh, which obviously is an ongoing battle and allows me obviously to produce and underwrite, uh, I'm sorry, produce and originate loans and uh, my primary marketplace is Illinois. Uh, like I said, American Portfolio is licensed in multiple states, and we can assist you in those areas. Uh, best to reach me at my website, which is genemunt.com, if you're looking for those specific answers. Um, I wanted to kind of give the first-time home buyer who I'm going to try to uh, most, mostly direct this to today. Um, not that we don't deal with step up buyers and do refinances and all the rest, but the primary focus today for me in this session would be the first time home buyer and try to give a general overview of our process and what to expect moving forward uh, to take some of the fears out of it for you. People have heard and read and um, understand that financing has become a little bit more difficult in the last few years. 
while I won't deny that, people with good credit and the ability to borrow money and then pay it back are getting successfully handled. So you can get that money. It's cheap. There's no better time to buy, in my opinion. Um, if you haven't done so already, uh, I think the window is probably starting to close. So I would suggest you do a couple of things. Before you go looking at homes, you need to find a qualified lender, one that you're comfortable with. Hopefully I can service you in that area. I look at four varying points for every client to determine whether or not I feel we have a loan that we can approve for you. First and foremost is credit. You have to have a minimum credit ranking or credit score uh, in order to obtain a loan, whether it be FHA, conventional, VA, USDA, all the different products that I can offer. Uh, the middle credit score currently that we need to see is 620 in most loans, 640 in some other programs. That's considered an average credit score. The typical scores range anywhere on the low side from 500 to on the high side 820, 830, and um, you know that's that's typically the range of credit scores that we see. So ideally, you want to be at 740, which will give you the absolute best interest rate that you're seeing and reading and understanding exists out there today. Um, so credit A number one, first thing we look at is the uh, credit scores for any given borrower, not just the scores, we also look at their debt that's contained within that report, we look at the type of uh, credit that's been established, and we look at how long that credit has been established. It's very important for you as a first time home buyer to know that loan programs today require a minimum of two open accounts. So if you've been a homeowner or a, uh, an individual that likes to pay cash for their purchases, uh, including their car and have never had a credit card, I highly encourage you to open up two credit cards to establish some credit history and indicate that you know how to handle that type of debt. So uh, just a tip there for first time home buyers, I have seen that as a stumbling block for, for those that have entered the market, trying to enter the market, but have no established credit. So that is critical today. So we've looked at credit. We know that we have a minimum score to move forward with. And now we're going to in, uh, ask questions about income and employment. We need to know what your job history has been for a minimum of the last two years and what you do for a living, how you get paid, whether it's a hourly wage, whether it's a salary, whether you're commissioned, maybe you're uh, retired and receiving uh, pension or Social Security income. Uh, those are certainly uh, monies and income that we can use to qualify you for a loan moving forward. Many uh, individuals are self-employed and self-employed kind of fits into its own category. It's very difficult to uh, make a, an assumption on a pre-approval for a self-employed borrower without knowing and seeing tax returns for the last two years. So every buyer today provides a tax return for their last two years uh, that is verified. And uh, so with a self-employed, the only way to verify income is through those tax returns and the accompanying schedules that go with that. So keep that in mind if you're self-employed, two-year minimum history in order to qualify for a loan today. There are some uh, instances where we can get by with less than two years, but you'd have to see me on a specific case-by-case -case basis for those. So we've established credit. We've established income and employment. We need to know now what your total debt is and what you're paying on a monthly basis for any mortgages that you might have already uh, taken out if you're not a first-time home buyer. Uh, installment loans such as car payments, student loans, recreational vehicles, uh, truck payments, uh, bank loans where you've established some sort of credit and, and collateral other than those items, and, uh, and of course uh, revolving debt, which is credit card debt. So though, uh, those uh, three categories primarily, there are other considerations that we have to look at, are then looked at to see what that total debt is on a monthly basis, and that 
debt is compared to the monthly income on a gross basis. So your gross monthly income and those debts that you're incurring on a monthly basis are weighed together in what's called the debt to income ratio. Uh, that's a critical number as we sit here in December 2013. Uh, that number is um, about to change in January 2014. So uh, just know that the industry is always changing and that you need to make sure you're working with a qualified experienced lender that is on top of those uh, upcoming changes. Uh, then we're down to how do we uh, make a down payment? So what are your assets? That's the fourth area of interest that I need to know when I'm doing a pre-approval and that can be done a number of ways on the phone directly face to face or uh, internet. We can do an online application, we can uh, do it by uh, fax or email as well, but there's a number of ways to get this accomplished, but you absolutely want to do this within uh, the time frame uh, specified by your realtor because Ann and others won't go out and show you properties that you're not qualified for. So it's important for us to determine with those four items I can tell you really within the span of a half hour to an hour depending on the complexity uh, of your file and your scenario and whatever else I might be juggling at the time uh, but we're going to get those figures to you fairly quickly and you'll know what your maximum sales price range should be you'll know what your loan options are and I'll need to uh, establish that in what's called a letter of pre-approval so that the parties involved, meaning your realtor and the seller's realtor, know the parameters for the financing because without financing the deal may not happen. Let's be honest. So with that pre-approval in hand, I've sent you out to deal with your realtor and I'll show you uh, the properties that you're, you've picked out. You'll come back with that contract in hand after some negotiations. I stay out of that, of course. Um, that's left to the parties, the realtors and the seller and you. Uh, you come back with an approved contract, congratulations, you're all worn out, you're ready to take a break. No, you can't do that. You've got five days in which to have your attorney review the contract in Illinois. You've got five days, as Ann said, to get that home inspection. And you've got five days to file your completed loan application. Uh, so we're at this point now. We're going to do the loan application with me. So we need documentation from you. I need pay stubs, W-2s, 1099s if you're that uh, self-employed or a, a independent contractor. Uh, we need your tax returns for two years. We need your bank statements for the last two months. We need to know where the money's coming from for the down payment. That's why we ask for those bank statements. Uh, we may even ask you for more. Some have said we ask for DNA samples and maybe um, you know take take your blood uh, as well, but uh, it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, those are documents that you should have readily available. If you don't, you want to find those now. You want to put them in a folder if you're planning on buying in the next six months to a year. Uh, you want to get those things together. Or at least know that you you're going to need those items. Um, so we're at the application. We've completed the documentation needed. You're aware at that point of what your monthly payment's going to be. You're aware of the type of loan that we're doing. Uh, you're aware that it's a fixed rate loan versus an adjustable rate. To uh, be honest with you, with rates so low, 95% uh, of what I do right now is a fixed rate loan. But you certainly have options, and those are things that we like to discuss with you and leave uh, that decision to you ultimately. Uh, you'll know how much cash you will need to get approved and how much cash you will need to come to closing with. So after the application, uh, then I start the loan process. I put my feet up and I let others do that job for me. I'm just kidding. Uh, we're not done. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do behind the scenes and uh, the good news for you if you're dealing with me I keep you in the loop as to where we stand and uh, I'm always available by phone email or any other times that you have questions uh, we keep an open line of communication as Ann said with all the parties of the transaction uh, the attorneys the realtors the uh, appraisers the home inspectors etc so it's in our hands. We've got the file started and we're going to order an appraisal. 
it's a key component right now simply because um, appraisals are being uh, reviewed and scrutinized more so than ever before as you can imagine uh, with where home values have gone in the last you know, five to seven years every market is different uh, but just know that the appraisal is done for our protection as the lender we don't want to lend any more than what the house is worth certainly uh, for your protection as well you don't want to overpay for a property as Ann said earlier you should have some guidance on that from your realtor quite honestly um, when you're making your offer uh, you should have a, a reasonable idea of what other properties have sold for that are like the ones you're buying uh, in the area that you're buying uh, the old uh, that's not call me old that's call me the, the former appraiser in me uh, likes to spend a little time on this topic because um, I, I find that uh, we are seeing some cases where the properties are appraising for less than what they're selling for and primarily um, there's two ways to handle that uh, you can try to renegotiate the contract with the seller of the property asking that the seller come down to that appraised value or quite frankly you can come up with more money as a down payment because we're gonna lend based on that appraised value not on the higher sales price just understand that we use the lower of the two when determining how much money we will lend you and within uh, the guidelines of those down payment criteria that that are in place today so after the appraisal if, let's assume it comes in at the sales price or higher we're moving forward at that point we're typically ready to submit a file to an underwriter at American Portfolio Mortgage Corporation those underwriters are all under one roof and so that is done internally to avoid delays um, to have certain controls over the process and quite frankly in a tough scenario or a case where we just need to have an honest discussion on, on certain parameters of the file uh, we can do that through our processor who is then the intermediary between the underwriter and the loan officer uh, so we do have that ability to have that uh, discussion and, and help to understand the file better because quite frankly uh, sometimes uh, black and black and white on paper just doesn't translate to what's really happening here in the case for the buyer uh, so just know that you know I'm on your side as a uh, lender I want this file to make sense to uh, our company to lend the money but I want you to see your success uh, met by the uh, approval which is in our words uh, world known as the clear to close that is the holy grail uh, that a buyer is uh, looking for from a lender the clear to close that means if all of the reviews all of the processes have been met an underwriter is comfortable with the with the loan and that we're going to be able to move you to a closing table so uh, from that clear to close to a closing we need typically uh, uh, 48 hours or two business days to prepare a closing document package and to make sure that our funds our loan amount is available for you the day of your closing at that day of closing you're gonna ask uh, you're gonna be asked to bring in a photo ID obviously to identify yourself to a title company agent who doesn't know you like I do and you're also going to need money and that money is brought in the form of a cashier's check if it's less than fifty thousand dollars that you're bringing to the table in Illinois if it's above fifty thousand dollars you're wiring the money from your bank account to the title company's bank account so um, those things in place you're at a closing your attorney is guiding you through the paperwork I personally try to attend I would say I attend probably eighty percent of my uh, closings uh, and that includes my refinance closings because um, I like to be there for the client I like to assist the uh, attorney who may not understand our loan documents as well as I do quite frankly uh, I but I don't practice law so I don't tell the attorneys how to describe a note and a mortgage etc uh, but just know that you're protected by uh, the presence of your attorney uh, in any legal matters and then if there's any questions regarding the terms of the loan the type of loan that you're getting the payment all of those things uh, are, are for me to address and, and answer if you have questions at that time so 
Uh, so we've gotten you from application, I'm sorry, pre-approval, I should say, to the closing table. As Ann said, that can happen anywhere from 30 to 60 days. We've closed them in less than 30 days, depending on the, the, the market and the complexity of the file. Uh, but if you're into a uh, real estate contract, you probably want to allow 30 to 45 days, depending on uh, the advice of your realtor. And, you know, sometimes the, the terms of the seller dictate when you're going to close as well. So just remember that it's nothing is etched in stone. It's all negotiable and that you have to uh, work with the uh, concepts and the ideas presented to you by your experts, your realtors, your lenders, uh, your attorneys, and ultimately uh, your insurance agent as well. And with that, I'm going to wrap up because I'm uh, tired of hearing myself talk at this point. So. <laughs> well, um, Gene, thank you so much. Um, uh, I think we're going to uh, try and get um, Richard unmuted and uh, then he can talk to us about insurance, right? So we'll let Gene mute himself. I'm going to step we'll out. Thank back. you. <laughs> and then uh, there we go. Um, I think it is so fun to be able to um, kind of summarize what Gene said, okay? And be before you jump into Anne's car, all right, it's like how much money do you have for your down payment? You need to tell them that. Um, do you pay your bills on time? Okay, this is, this is a question. They said it in a long way. I'm just going to say here, do, do you pay your bills on time? And uh, um, do you have your list? Of, of what you're what you want what you don't want but part of getting uh, your your loan finished is having an insurance agent and that is another very integral part of your transaction because you need to um, have homeowners insurance if you're getting a loan so it is my pleasure to introduce our other team member here I mean we were having fun in the green room Richard so I, I thought oh man I'd like to have insurance from this guy. <laughs> Richard uh, Stringham is the president and managing officer of Stringham Insurance Agency in uh, Mokina, Illinois, and he and his wife uh, have owned that agency and uh, since 1980, and he is an insur uh, independent insurance agent, which uh, he will explain, and uh, he does all kinds of insurance, and I know that uh, having multiple insurance policies does affect the uh, price that you're paying and he does auto home life and business so Richard welcome to the team and we're excited to hear just a little bit about insurance in the transaction good morning how are you all it, we're great it is cold in the area. Um, I, yeah really I, you can say that when you're in Arizona I suppose <laughs> But, yeah, but um, I live in the mountains of Arizona, and, and it's 19 degrees here now. <laughs> but uh, but thank you so much for in, inviting me today. It's been um, uh, I kind of been looking forward to this. You know, buying a home, it, it's a very exciting time, but it's it's always very stressful. It seems, and our whole idea is to make it easy on our clients. Um, we're trying to remove this. Um, we are indeed independent agents. Uh, we're an agency that's been around for quite a while. My wife and I found it well over 30 years ago. Um, we're a family agency. I have a daughter that's with us as an agent, uh, very experienced. Uh, so we're handling seniors, we're handling uh, uh, the boomers, and uh, we're handling the millennials as well. Um, so for uh, especially if you're a first timer we urge you to give us a call we think we can do this for you um, but we're independent agents and that means that we do not work for an insurance company we are not employed by any of the companies that you see on television um, we rep we uh, work for effectively for ourselves but we work for our client um, our client represents us we do the shopping we, rep we we price it out with a number of different companies that we're involved with uh, all very good ones most of which have been around for 90 plus years um, we, we have a lot of experience in this, but we do work for you. We do not work for an insurance company, and that's a very important distinction. Um, you have to remember that you know, as a truck, Gene's going to hand you a whole bucket full of money, but we're going to hand you a piece of paper, and that piece of paper is really, it represents a promise. 
and it's something that we take uh, very much very much to heart. Um, but we we sell a promise, and uh, your homeowner's insurance is really only as good as the agent that sells it to you. And if you have a problem, believe me, you'll be grateful that you have an agent that you can uh, know and trust. Um, we operate here in the tech in the Illinois area, the Chicago land area, Mokina, Illinois is is southwest of the city of Chicago. We're in the big beautiful suburbs. Um, it's a little colder here than it is downtown. Uh, exciting for that. Um, but uh, probably one of the most important things that you need to know, especially in line with what uh, Gene was just telling you, is that when you buy a homeowner's insurance policy, be prepared to pay for that insurance policy up front for a full year. Okay? So um, when it it's all said and done and the quotes are handed out. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to need a check for the full annual premium because you're going to have to bring uh, proof of insurance to the closing and they're going, and they typically want them in advance, but you're going to have to bring proof of insurance to the closing and show that it's paid. So be prepared for that. Then what happens from there typically is uh, an escrow account is established for insurance, just like your taxes, and uh, one twelfth of that premium will be added on to the principal and interest of your mortgage. Um, that will be um, part of your payment. So something to keep in mind. Um, when we get the uh, information as to here's your address and the house that you're looking for, uh, we start doing some research. We need some information on the history of the house. We'll typically find a lot of this stuff out for you. Uh, we need to know the condition. Uh, an insurance company doesn't want to insure a pick and a poke as they say. Um, they want to make sure that the home has been updated, that the roof is looking good and that you know you're on circuit breakers and, and uh, the plumbing is up to date. Uh, the heating and all that needs to be redone uh, so that we're, we're in, in, in good stead there. Um, we're going to be looking at your credit as well. Uh, credit scoring in the last few years has become an integral part of what is being done in the underwriting. Uh, so if all things are absolutely equal, uh, you and your twin brother are buying houses next door to each other, uh, the credit score could make one of you get a little better break than another. Uh, so it's important to know. Uh, the, coverage, um, the coverage on the building, uh, what we're going to be doing is that you need to carry as much insurance on the building at least um, as the uh, amount of your loan, um, but every, any company will tell you now that they want these things done for full replacement value on the home. If your place burns to the ground, uh, the insurance company really doesn't care as much about the buy and sell price of the home. They're much more concerned about putting it back together for you. And so that's what we're concerned about. So we're going to write a homeowner's insurance policy for you. This is going to cover your dwelling. This is going to cover your contents. Uh, and we're covering you for a whole myriad of um, uh, perils, uh, fire, lightning, a wind, a uh, tornado is a windstorm, um, vandalism, malicious mischief, uh, uh, vehicle damage, uh, any one of a number of different perils are going to be covered under a homeowner's policy. Um, we like to say really that homeowner's insurance is really one of the big bargains in Illinois. It's easy for me to say, I suppose, because to spend other people's money, but um, when you look at the coverage and what the insurance company is on the hook for, for the amount of your premium, it's really pretty remarkable. Um, if you did have a fire or, or something and there is a large loss, uh, the insurance company is also going to pay loss of use. So they're going to pay you to be in the Holiday Inn for eight months while they're rebuilding your home uh, or repainting or, or doing whatever repairs are involved. That's an extra expense that they will pick up for you. Uh, in addition, there's coverage for liability. Um, typically 300,000 or so, sometimes more. Um, we, rec we see the big suit is more likely to happen um, in the whole liability end of things. And so we do recommend a higher limit of coverage. The, in, should someone slip and fall on your property or the dog bites someone or something, um, the company will defend you and then they will pay up to the limit of liability and damages on your behalf. So it, the protection really is very broad. Um, the coverage on the building is subject to a deductible. Um, that's the amount of money that you would have to pay um, as part of the sharing part of this deal. So your uh, $4,000 loss, uh, that cost you four thousand dollars to repair the insurance company will pay that four thousand dollars less whatever deductible you choose typically a thousand dollars five hundred maybe uh, fifteen hundred maybe a thousand seems to be more typical now than anything else um, thousand dollars I'm sorry to say this isn't what it used to be 
Um, we'd, I'd like to um, talk to your, when you're talking to your agent, and it, it really goes without saying when someone calls us looking for a home insurance policy, we try to package the auto and home insurance with the same company. Uh, most of our companies, almost all of our companies, will provide a discount for you uh, on your auto insurance and your homeowner's insurance if you have the other policy um, with the same company. So there is kind of an economy of scale there, so that's something that you want to look to if we possibly can. Every once in a while it doesn't work out that way, but it typically does. Um, we'd like to caution you to consider flood insurance. Um, not that I'm suggesting you go out and buy it, but you need to talk to your realtor, you need to talk to your mortgage person. Um, you want to know if uh, you are in a floodplain. If you are in a floodplain, that is something that you would have to pick up. It's an additional coverage. Again, that would be prepaid at the time of closing. They would take and add an additional one twelfth of that annual premium onto your monthly payment every month. Flood insurance can be expensive, and if you're in a floodplain, that's something you need to know before you get really far into the deal, uh, because you have to decide if this is something that you wish to, uh, an expense that you wish to assume, and uh, it's important. Um, one of the things we, we do like to recommend to people is that reconsider your life insurance at this particular point in time. Uh, you're typically taking on a, a very large debt. Uh, in the event of an, uh, the unthinkable happening, um, your spouse is going to be stuck with the mortgage that you just agreed to, uh, in addition to the, the normal bills that come along associated with your home and, and um, with your, your life plan. So uh, prudent planning uh, really dictates that you uh, consider the life insurance aspects as well. Again, talk to your agent. Um, keep talking to your agent. It's one of those things that we, we kind of recommend. Um, there's nothing, you'd be amazed at how many people will come to us the, the day before closing and say, I, I need this for tomorrow. You want to give a little consideration to this. This is really an important part of what you're doing here. And it's ongoing. It will be with you for as long as you own your home. You're going to be dealing with homeowners insurance uh, and the issues that support that. Um, again, insurance, your insurance policy, it's only as good as the agent um, from whom you purchase it. So uh, keep that in mind. Find someone you're comfortable with who's got experience, who's been around the block a few times, and who's available to you. Uh, we like to think that uh, we're very, very uh, accessible. Um, our registered service mark is just small town professionals, and we take that very seriously. Um, even the city of Chicago, you know, uh, they appreciate the, the Midwestern small town attitude uh, that we try to provide. We, we, we try to take care of our people. Um, People come to us to save money, but typically they stay with us for the service. Um, buying a home, it's really a big deal. Um, we want you to be smart, and we want you to protect what's probably going to be the biggest purchase you're ever going to make. So good luck, and I'm back. And I, I've always wanted to say this, but back to you in Arizona, Kara. Oh, how fun is that? <laughs> what a delightful team, and I want to thank you all for being the absolute first in the series of the Real Estate Roundtable out of Buy Real Estate Around the World. And um, Anne, I'm going to uh, blue box you, Anne McMillan, and uh, um, <clears throat> I uh, want to make sure that you, there, are you unmuted now, Anne? I'm unmuted. There, okay, great. And uh, you can see her website, Starting Point Realty there, and if you want to say a, a goodbye, Anne, we, we've enjoyed seeing how the team works together, and I, I think anybody watching realizes how many parts there are that go together in purchasing a home, and when you have a group that you're working with to begin with, where everyone is um, cohesive, uh, you, you're going to get your deal done, and you're going to have fun. I think that's the key, having fun. Yeah, I mean, having a group of people who work well together and who know what they're doing is a world of difference than having, you know, a lender who's never met this agent before and this agent has never met this attorney and they're all complete strangers. And not to say that that can't work, but there tends to be some issues when the communication between the parties is not flowing well and they're not keeping each other in the loop. So, yeah, it's really about the group as a whole rather than just your individual lender, your individual agent. You really need everyone to work well together, which is why I think we're doing this presentation as a group with the, all of us involved together. So, 
Wonderful. And Jean, thank you for being the spearhead, putting this, putting this all together, showing us the way um, with uh, how the teams work and using the technology, stepping up, using the technology and sharing so anybody who is watching realizes how this all flows together. Well, thank you again, Cara. And uh, I, I'm going to uh, say you're the spearhead of this, but uh, I, I'm happy. Uh, yes, I'm happy I, I, I to be. To uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be labeled as such, and uh, I'm actually very uh, um, honored and, and blessed to have uh, quality folks like Ann and, and uh, Dick Stringham uh, as uh, not only business associates but friends. And uh, um, quite honestly, um, the the work is hard but there has to be some fun involved with it. I do enjoy what I do. Having two adult sons uh, that are starting their young families, um, dealing with first-time home buyers in that age group, I, I tend to think of them as uh, my own family. And I know that sounds corny, but I believe that uh, with every ounce of my fiber and try to try to deal with my clients as I would my own my own son. So, uh, that being said, I really appreciate your time, Kara and uh, Richard right. as well. So wonderful. Well, just as a review, you can get all of the links for our team members from Chicago, Illinois, and all including the host state. Jean lends in six other states. You can get it on the um, detail of the event uh, that we posted here at Google Plus. And you can also get those links on the description on the YouTube link. And so we want to thank all of you and we want to thank you. Check out the photos in the event because it'll be fun to what Chicago is like. We had a Chicago photographer, Lori Novak, posting some of her photos. And um, uh, Randy Schickenbach from Wisconsin, and Jean, you actually can loan in Wisconsin, uh, posting some very inspiring photos for anybody who's thinking about uh, purchasing a home in the Chicago, Illinois area. So, signing off, Cara Riley, small business and real estate consultant with uh, the Realtors Roundtable, and we'll look forward to the next one. And thank you again, everyone. Peace. Have a great week. <laughs>